the present work approach the social and technological dynamics that participate in the transition from hand modeling pottery to the use of potter's wheel. We analyze technological change from a long-term perspective. Today, I will explain how an indigenous handmade domestic and female pottery production system turns into essentially male potter's wheel and workshop activity. The reports of Chilean pottery are rich in reference, which permit us to analyze technological change. During the last two centuries, a corpus of technological information was created. This corpus is quite considerable in the case of the village of Pomaire in Central Valley of Chile. From 20th century, a number of folklorists documented and described the craft traditions in Promaire. Historians and anthropologists created an intensive program to compile life stories of rural potters. With the Spanish conquest in the 60th century, the local population of the Central Chilean Valley conserved their indigenous handmade pottery production. In fact, until the end of 20th century, rural women continued using the indigenous techniques for pottery making. They adapted their products to the forms and needs of the Hispanic population and the new Criolla cuisine. In colonial times, pottery made with potter's wheel arrived to the rural states from the other countries across commercial ports, ports of Valparaíso and, Santiago, and San Antonio. The village was founded between the capital city, Santiago, and its commercial port, Valparaíso. In the 16th century, founded how a Indian village, according to the Spanish rules. The produce manufactured a chain for vegetables and fruits in the nearest farms. The monetary exchange was very low. These technological strategies were essentially the same for all the women, for all the women potters in the central southern Chile. The apprentice learned in the house with the mother. She would play and learn to the same time. She would start at 10 years old to help with non-specialized tasks, such as kneading and collecting the clay, and in a second step, polish the pots. Between 1930 and 1950, appeared first workshops and non-specialized subaltern work in a rural context where monetary economy hardly existed, some villages coordinated the non-monetary exchange of pottery in the nearest states, with annual trips to sell the pots a few markets. For this reason, some families started to make pottery all year long and accumulated the stock for the annual sale. In line with this process, in the 1920s, a few women potters converted their houses into small workshops introducing paid labor. With the regulation of obligatory schooling until the age of 13, and coinciding with the first workshops in the village, pottery learning would be postponed until the women were adults at about 15 years old. In this moment, a new kind of pottery firing appeared. By the 1930s, one specialized in making flower pots arrived to the village. Ernesto Ordóñez, born in Santiago, he moved to Pomaire because his marriage with a woman to the, of the village. He worked with kin and potter's wheel. The skill created by, by Ordóñez had no parallels in the area. By the mid-1950s, every potter had a similar kin in their badges. At the beginning, the potter's wheel was not available for everybody. It was an exclusive technique which, uh, which was hardly shared. The only 
pot retarna the living in Pomaire world in the shadow of throwing flower pots and did not socialize his knowledge. By 1950, new turners arrived to the village from the south. They were hired by a family to produce flower pots and also worked secret so not to imitate. In this same period, Ernesto Ordóñez's son continued his father's tradition. It was then when the rest of the village started to see the potter's wheel from a different perspective as it was just by a man born in the village. Consequently, some of the inhabitants were interested in knowing the technique and tried to build the fish potter's wheel. David Pardo or Raúl Riveros, for example, remembers having seen a potter's wheel for the first time around 1960 when they went to buy the clay to another potter's house, and they show how they worked. Victor Vera clear explained the private uh, and secret nature the potter's wheel when it arrived to the village. A man arrived, and the neighbor saw the yard and think, that man is making 12 pots as usual, when suddenly, the friends sees that the twelve pots were not there. What is he doing? Magic? He saw a lot of pots, and the man with the claw closed the wrong closed. He pet in a crack and saw inside the room and saw a small potter's wheel. However, while the machinery started to, to be visible, the, lo the local population tried to imitate it, using local innovations to construct a, a kit wheel. Nevertheless, each change was not produced until the population had a direct contact with the machinery. This gave origin to the local development of the fish machinery and the technical transmission not restricted to some local uh, specialist. This change demanded fast learning processes, as opposed to the strategy followed in the hand modeling. In about a week, they learned to throw. The new machinery, as well as the technical gestures and operation used, were adapted to the elaboration of the traditional pottery form, the woman modeled by hand. In this way, the women continued controlling the part of the productive process which was strongly related to domestic space. As a rule, women potter decide to hire internet pottery turners who made the, the basic form of the pieces. Women potters later decorate, polished and sliped the pots. The potters well were generally owned by the woman by the woman potters and were fished in the different workshops. At the same time arrived to the village the decantation basin and the grinding uh, machinery. In this case, the privatization of the clay sources in the hill forced them to use the lower quality materials found in the valley, where Pomaire was boiled. In parallel, some women changed the wooden table for the table. The turntable was a tool which prevented working on the floor, a position which forced the potters to rotate around the piece. They maintained the same tennis, but the pot rot out, rotated on its own. It was a local innovation with high variability. Some were made of iron or wood, and they were either square or circular. In this process, the specialist workshop were adopted by the villagers around 96 or 97. In time, this process implied the coexistence of different technological strategies and organization of production system in the village. In 1973, 48% of the families already used the potter's wheel. 
while the remaining 52% continued working by hand, using the turntable in some houses. Between 1950 and 1970, the learning networks and system of knowledge transmission were transformed. Pomire population grew 61%, while the average population growth rate in the country was 49.7%. The introduction of, the, of these uh, women in pottery making activities implied the incorporation of new ideas which were presented in innovative ways, as well as higher flexibility for adopting motor patterns related to the traditional practices. A mode of conclusion, this analysis of sources just indicate that the economic rentability and technical efficiency are not the only reasons for the technological change implied in the introduction of the potter's wheel. The connection between male work and the use of the potter's wheel with the origin of workshops and technological change are not so evident. In fact, the men had been incorporated the pottery production before the potter's wheel appeared. The early specialization of the potters of Pomaire, due to the annual sale, had a dynamizing effect in transforming labor organization. It implied the appearing specialized workers and differentiated spaces in the houses. The arrival of foreign population, learning in adulthood, and changing the mode of transmission of knowledge would create the appropriate conditions for change in the technological operational ch chain. Also, the introduction of the potter's wheel was possible because the population had already incorporated other technological change in the raw materials preparation and in the firing process. This data evidence the need to distinguish between the incorporation of the foreign innovation, local acceptance and adaptation, and generalization of the population. This must be understood as a process where technological change are in a constant negotiation being permanently accepted and rejected. In this sense, the outcome and generalization of Potter's will was related to the end of the process defined it by social, ideological and economic change in the village.